The Mental Health Show with Mark Haston. Uh, well-being, mental health, I love talking about this stuff. And it's so important, particularly at the moment. Uh, Aaron Cartwright is a local guy, and uh, I reached out to Aaron uh, a couple of days ago and asked him if he'd uh, come onto the program. And I, I'm not sure whether most people know, but um, I do these interviews, then I put them up onto uh, onto my podcast, which is called The Mental Health Show. It's very cleverly named, actually, The Mental Health Show. Um, so I do that as well. So I, I just like to share these out as much as I can because, you know, I enjoy them. I hope my guests enjoy them, but more importantly, I hope you get a lot out of these because um, these are um, discussions with people who are doing great things, and I'm sure Aaron is one of those. Aaron, welcome along. How are you doing? Yes, good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolute pleasure, mate. Now, I didn't realise, I'm not sure why, for some reason or other, I, I thought you were for inter- interstate. Have you lived here all your life? I have, yeah. I was a little bit confused when you said Adelaide time. I thought, all right, maybe you're in a different state. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, and you're a, you're, you're down at Alberton, but you're a Crows man. I'm a Crows man. I'm, I'm a confused boy. I'm very confused. <laughs> you know, I'm in the... Have you, but when I walk when I walk around the streets, I make sure I don't I don't tell anyone that around Alberton. No, well, it would be very dangerous, Aaron. No doubt very about dangerous. that. Have you seen Michelangelo Rucci, who of course is a port man? Have you seen him, you know, sort of sniggering around the Port Adelaide area, uh, you know, late at night, perhaps? I haven't yet. No, I'll, I'll keep an eye out though. I'll keep an eye out. <laughs> um, mate, f- first and foremost, so what school do you go to here locally? I went to Henley High. Oh yeah, well that that's a very significant school in terms of sport, ASL, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Did did, yeah. did you play sport? I did. I played. Uh, I still play AFL like uh, local locally, mm. uh, St Ramblers. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I've always loved it. It's always been my passion. So I love sports. Anything, anything sports, anything competitive. I just love doing. Is that right? Isn't that interesting? But was mum and did you get that from mum and dad or one of the two? Oh, you know what? My dad's not that competitive. My mum is probably the most competitive. She's a, yeah, she's a crazy port lady. So yeah, loves yeah. port power and uh, very competitive. So I probably probably got it from her. I probably got it from her. So I, yeah. ta- I, ta- how old are you, Aaron? I'm 29. 29, and, and I ta- so from what I gather, just in in our early discussion here, uh, like are you fairly? I mean, fitness is an important thing for you physically. We'll talk physically first. Yeah, yeah. Well, basically, yeah. I I had a gym. I was a PT, so I definitely, uh, I definitely think that's a big thing. You know, physical fitness. That's 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 key. Yeah, um, yeah. H- how have you found that personally during during COVID? The the fitness side of things. Yeah. I yeah. It's it's a big thing. To be honest, I'm not like I used to be a lot more fit, and I used to take it more serious, which is hence why I was a PT and I owned a gym. But mm. I do it now more for mental health, more for feeling good, feeling um, grounded, connected, and just feeling all around energetic. So yeah, um, it's really it's been key, definitely through yeah the whole COVID. Yeah, um, absolutely. And 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 even though we're not able to go to gym to a gym at this stage, and it doesn't look as though that will be occurring in the next couple of weeks at least. And I'm I go to next gen. I I've, I just started about well I've been going to next gen for 15 years but um i uh i started to go up into the gym about three months before covid and then of course covid hit so i have got a versa climber at home that i use but it's it's, yeah but it's outside so it's very cold so it's it's difficult oh yeah yeah so i'm i'm just in the process now of instead of driving my dog around uh my beautiful dog jack uh, around to the park, I'm I'm going to make the effort to start walking because I, I I have put on a little bit of weight, two or three kilos. It's not a lot, but you can feel it. And you can. Uh, yeah, and I, and I guess and I guess also getting back to your other point about mental health, you know, which we'll have a good discussion about. But I just feel as though it, it's it's you know apart from everything else I'm doing to try and keep my mental health in check, I just feel as though that is such an important part of it. You would agree with that? Absolutely, absolutely, hundred percent. Yep. So, yep. so what? What's? T- tell me, tell me specifically what you do. So, Aaron Cartwright Education. Um, tell our tell our listeners, you know, exactly what you do. Yeah. So basically, I, I run programs and I do one on ones. Um, I'll tell you about my history just so it would make more sense. Yeah. Basically, mm. growing up, I had a lot of anxiety, a lot of social anxiety, a lot of. Um, 
I just I couldn't I couldn't you know doing this kind of stuff would have freaked me out. I couldn't be in a room with more than two people. Wow. Um, I would avoid people. I was very I was a very nervous kind of kid. Um, sometimes I hit it well, but yeah, I was a very anxious kid and I didn't understand why. And obviously, you know, especially with anxiety, you can get depressed too. So I was very depressed. You know, mm. I'd go in and out of depression. You know, sometimes sometimes I'd be fine growing up, then other other times I'd be really low. And I think from that, I used to really. I used to think, well, what's going on? Like, why am I like, I used to really question why I was like this. And I think that's where it all started from. Yeah. Where I started questioning how, why am I so different? I feel like I was, I, at the time, I felt like I was very different to others. Mm. Now I know that a lot of kids go through it. But at the time I thought, wow, like, am I the only one that's like severely like this? Like yeah. I didn't, and, and it really uh, gave me an interest in, in, anxiety depression you know anything to do with emotions anything to do with your mental health was really um a passion of mine growing up um so now i've made it into my thing where you know i've done a lot of personal development i've done a lot of uh i've done therapy i've done pretty much everything you can think of and i've found what works and what doesn't work mm. and mm. i now teach my clients what how i overcome things how what have I, what i've done what tools that work for me and I guide them through that so they can um, have more control, have more, uh, be more empowered in their own life where, you know, um, they've got the tools whenever they want them. Yeah, and, and, and they're more in control. I want to talk more about that. But, but before we do, I want to go back. So, and, and, and if, if you're comfortable, I, I hope you Yeah, are. go for it. I'd like yeah, to, I am. I'm open. I, I'm an open book. Go I, for it. I'd like to ask you a few questions about your anxiety. I suffered enormous anxiety when I was young, yet at the same yeah. time, particularly when I got a bit older, you know, from about 14, I, I tended to be the life of the party, which was ridiculous because I was still very yeah, un- yeah. very unconfident. Yeah. What, did your, yeah. what did your anxiety look like? Uh, paint a picture. Okay, well, it was different throughout different stages of my life. But if we're talking very young, before teenage years, it mm. was more just I didn't know what it was. Obviously, I was just so young, I didn't even know what anxiety meant. I didn't never even heard of it. So looking back on it, I did have anxiety. Mm. And that looked like just being very um, uh, worry. I was a vo- – like my dad used to always say, you're a warrior. You yeah. just worry, you worry, you worry. Mm. So I used to worry about things, worry about my family fighting, worry about – I used to think ahead, worst case scenarios when I was very young. Mm. You know, I used mm. to overthink things. Um, and I used to, yeah, I used to really just overthink things. And, and obviously, I couldn't control my emotions because I, I, would, I, would, I would get so sick of being so stuck, I would just blow up sometimes. Mm. Um, but then more, you know, uh, teenage years, I started drinking, you know, smoking weed, doing sh- stupid stuff. Um, trying to be cool but also trying to cover up the anxiety absolutely um, yeah yeah it was more of a cover-up to be honest just mm. so i could go to a party and actually socialize without freaking out you know mm. um mm. but the same thing i would i would sometimes be the life of the party as well even though i was anxious which is i think another thing it was just a cover-up of like okay i'm anxious i, I need to be loved here like i want people to like me and I'd, I'd just like put on it, put on act. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then I, then I'd get home and go, Oh God, thank God I'm home. And just like, you know, now I can just be myself now. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a really interesting point. And I can relate. And I'm sure a lot of people can relate to all of what you said. I think one of the difficulties of all of that and one of the tiring things, certainly one of the things that was extremely tiring for me. I mean, you know, I, I worked as, you know, I worked at Channel 10 as a sports presenter for 20 years, and prior to that I was on the ABC for 15. Yeah. And all the way through, and, 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 you know, I did breakfast radio at Mix and 5AA, all the way through, pretty well all the way through all of that career, I, 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 I had a, a mask bolted on when I was, yeah. when I was working. And, yeah. and, and after a while, and I'm interested in your thoughts on this, after a while it gets so tiring it does, yeah. Do you, yep. re- you relate to that? Absolutely, absolutely. So it, it's because because a lot of people with anxiety, we don't know, we never got told or taught how to deal with our emotions, especially when we we're young. Mm. It's, and it's not a blame game of our parents or their parents. It's just that it's just like a, um, a generation thing where if you've got parents where they don't know how to deal with emotions, normally the kids don't know how to deal with emotions. Mm. And the best way we can do that, we just learn just to mask it, just to cover up. All right, suck it up and just pretend it's not there. Mm. Um, mm. 
And mm. when we do that, we're really splitting ourselves into two. We're really deep inside. We know we're we're not being authentic, but we we don't know any other way to do it. Yeah. So it's not a yeah. fault. Just we know deep down we're being authentic, uh, inauthentic. Mm. Um, but over time, what can happen is we can wear ourselves down, wear ourselves down, wear ourselves down, and we burn out. We can have our identity crises. We can have panic attacks. We can have all this stuff because mm. you can't whatever whatever you suppress eventually gets expressed you can't keep holding it in absolutely it eventually comes to the surface doesn't it eventually it's a matter of time you, do, you, you cannot run from it Aaron do you mind me asking this is even more of a personal question but what it. was your relationship like with, with girl I mean this is yeah, this is a tough question these days because I mean you might be gay. I don't know, so it's un- yeah. it's unfair that I ask this. So maybe the best way for me to ask, and I'm being quite yeah. serious there, but maybe yeah. the best part is, you know, if you were attracted to someone when you were young, yeah. uh, did you have did you have the confidence to 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 approach them, or was that all part yeah. of it, and you just did not have the confidence at all? No, no, yeah. So, oh, yeah, girls were a big problem for me. I, mm. I, I was way too anxious. I yeah. was too. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't. If I, I was, I was okay at talking to girls and and being their friend. Absolutely, until, absolutely. You know, I was. Yeah. I was that. I was that guy that you know. I was cool with girls, but. I couldn't make moves on them. I couldn't, mm. uh, I no. couldn't, um, you know. Go to the next level. Like, yeah. I couldn't take the next level. If I mm. wanted to, if I I'd think about kissing a girl and I couldn't do it, I couldn't make that move because I was so fearful of them rejecting me. I was so anxious of what they would think of me. Yeah. You know. Uh, and the, re- the, re- the rejection, the word rejection you just mentioned then, I think is a really big part of that, hey? Absolutely, yeah. It's there's so many fears, especially with anxiety. Yeah, but the fear of rejection, a lot of anxiety comes from not feeling good enough, you know, because there's there's fears of maybe being abandoned when you're young. Because there's a lot of people who have abandonment issues. They do. So yeah. even even if you don't have big wounds or, or issues from childhood, even like um, a lot of kids, a lot of kids um, get uh, what do you call it? I lost my train of thought. Get uh, what's the what's the word? Well, you, you, anxiety, anxiety from um, oh, are you, separation anxiety. Oh yeah, se- se- anxiety. of course, separate. Yeah. yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, and that yeah. comes from that comes from very very young. So, jeez, mm. um, uh, I forgot your question. Now, am I yeah. on the right track? Yeah, no, 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 totally. No, no, that's fine. But you're, you're right. The the a lot of that anxiety, as you say, comes from different areas, and one of them is separation. The other one, as you mentioned earlier, and, and you were spot yeah. on, is 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 abandonment as well. I mean, yeah, that, that, that's yeah. that's obviously another another part. So, as part of that, as part of that, and look, you know what? I can relate a hundred percent to what you're saying, one hundred percent, and. And because, you know, I, I, I always remember, you know, and I could name them, but I always remember the two or three guys at school who used to have girlfriends from the age of about 12, 13, and I'm thinking, they're so cool. How, how are they going? Out? And you know what? I don't, deep down inside, they might have been a bit self conscious, but, you know, yeah. but, but basically, I think they had the view, well, you know, if I'm going to ask you out and you say no, it's your loss. But see, we, yeah, never, yeah. we, but we never thought that. We thought, oh my God, it's my loss. How embarrassing this yeah. This is awful. I can never do this again. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Ab- yeah. Absolutely. So, so, do you, do you just get the feeling that there was something that might, might have happened to you when you were young that that, that, yeah. that caused well, this? Or well, the, the funny thing is this, and I think a lot of people might be be able to relate to this because the. I didn't have any, I call it micro traumas and macro traumas. Mm. Obviously, you know, with anxiety and, and abandonment issues and, and, and all that kind of stuff, it's easy to see someone who maybe has had sexual abuse, maybe yeah. physical abuse, yeah. maybe emotional abuse, all that kind of stuff, you know, or their mum or parents died when they were young. I didn't have any macro traumas where it was like, wow, mm. that's obvious why you'd be anxious. So I was a bit confused because my, my parents are loving people, my family are loving but what I've realized is, um, especially probably my mum, isn't emotionally regulated. Now, it's not her fault. What does that, uh, mean? What does that mean? Just dumb that down for us. Okay, so emotionally regulated. So when you're, you're born and you've got your parents there, babies need to feel safe emotionally. Yeah, you might have yeah. shelter. Mm. You might have food. You might have everything, and everything's fine. Um, but babies need to feel safe mm. emotionally. Mm. Now, if you've got an anxious mum, the babies pick up on that. The yeah. babies then pick up on that and go, okay, something's not 
something's a bit off. Wow. Something's a bit off here. Yep. Right? And it comes re- really, really early. Now, what I've realized is it's these little things that have been building up over my lifetime. When I was a baby, my mum has always uh, been on antidepressants and, and she's quite an anxious person. Mm. And, and mm. I love her. Like, she's, she's, she's so loving. Yeah, but of course, because yeah. of that, she, she means well. But because of that, um, emotionally, I probably didn't feel as safe as I wanted to. Mm. Now, this is very, very common, by the way. Very common in Absolutely. a lot of Absolutely. Yep, yep, um, yep. And this is not a blame mums because mums feel guilty <laughs> as it is already. Absolutely, um, yep. Yeah, but it's probably that. So, um, so do you do you being, call do you call that a macro or a micro? Uh, I call these micro traumas where where nothing's big, nothing obvious has happened mm, in my life. Mm, I haven't had mm. sexual abuse or anything like that. It's yep. nothing like that. Yep. It's the micro ones where I get. I used to be very anxious. So like even going to Target at Fulham, uh, I used to go to Fulham uh, Target there yeah. with Mum and I was yeah. there five years old. And I remember that she used to walk off from me, and I used to get so anxious that she was like five meters away. Mm. She because she didn't. She um, would just walk off. Wow. And I'd have to like run after her, and I'd, I remember freaking out like, "Don't leave me!" Like, like. Um, so it's just I had that kind of relationship where I never felt. Um, you know, a sense of calmness. Yes, and I only re- yes. I've only just realised that in the last probably few years, where it's like, oh, okay, this, you know, because I used to I used to wonder, am I repressing some big memory that it was so bad that I'm re- repressing it, which does happen in some people. Yeah. But I, I'm 100 percent sure nothing big has happened now, and I know what it is. It's, well, it's well, yeah, yeah, no, that, that and that and again, again, you know, it's like a mirror image of 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 what I went through, and it's really interesting. And quite quite spooky that you you should give that that example because um, my mother uh, was was she suffered depression all of her life and she was yeah. she was in and out of Glenside uh, you know in the seventies yeah. and early eighties and we were you know I was thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen that sort of age when that was going on it was norm- yeah. it was normal to us at home I mean it was just unfortunate you know dad had come home dad ran a gym in Hindley Street and he'd come home and mum would be having what we used to call one of her foofy fits where she was on the bed and she was really upset and probably pissed I mean she was a she, she you know as a result of that and she was on Valium so she was um, combining the alcohol so it didn't didn't take her much to get pissed anyway really um yeah, yeah. And, and then off off we'd take it to glenside and i mean you know it wasn't a funny thing for us but it was just it was just normal but but getting back to yeah. getting back to the point that you made about when you were young the really interesting thing is that when i was born in 58 mum was quite unwell then now as a child, between the ages of naught and three or four, you, you don't remember anything. But now okay. that but now that you say this, Aaron, I'm thinking yeah. to myself, maybe that was something that I went through similarly. Yeah. But of course, you don't yeah. you don't understand and feel it at the time. And the other really yeah. interesting thing, and this is, and you'll find this interesting, I think, as well. That yeah. that issue of you of your mother just wandering off two or three meters and you feeling this real sort of petrified sort of you know feeling of where you're going where you're going, I can yeah. remember quite vividly. Um, I'm I reckon I was about six, and my father was running a hotel called uh, the Havana on Glen Osmond Road, and that's probably relevant to the story. But anyway, he was running the, the Havana, <laughs> and and he he was. Um, uh, he he was coaching because dad dad was a fitness coach. He was coaching a guy called David, and and he, and and he had to go up and see him, and he took me, and so I stayed. But would you believe him and David left me there with David's wife? I think from memory, um, and went off somewhere, and and just sort of said, "I'll be back. I'll be back. Everything's okay." And I was horrified. Yeah, I was. Yeah. I, I, I was five or six. I was absolutely horrified. So I guess the point I'm making is what you have just yeah. said then really rings true to me. It really yeah. rings true to me. And that abandonment yeah. obviously can manifest itself in you know in so many ways. Yeah, that's fascinating. Well, when you, yeah, it's you're right. So you know you're a five year old boy, and everything everything secure has just left you, and you you're left to your own devices Absolutely. and that is that is a whether you like it or not that's a trauma right mm, that is an absolute mm, trauma mm. i think people think traumas have to be these big things but that these little micro traumas add up and they can they can 
affect all areas of our life growing up, and we it's yeah. all unconscious. And 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 just relating to, um, and again, I th- I'm sure people will relate to this, but just relating to um, you know rejection. I can remember just, and I'll just tell this briefly, but I can remember. I was about 15 and there was a girl at school who did like me and she invited me over to her her mother's place. She lived at St Peter's. So I went over and, of course, I had somehow, I had two or three beers before I went because I was so nervous and so, you know, I was horrified. It was just horrible. Like, I I wasn't able to relax. And at the end of the night, I can remember, and I just went there and we just played and did a few things. At the end of the night, I went to give her a kiss and she sort of moved her face away and said, no, Mark, no. When I got into the cab... Uh, look, I, I can say this, but I was almost suicidal. Yep. I, yeah. I I was absolutely gutted. Now, yeah. that is that that is an unusual response. I mean, okay, you might be a bit disappointed or a bit pissed off, or or you yeah. might might feel a bit flat. But to actually, and I can remember vividly, Aaron, getting into the cab and thinking, my whole world has just collapsed. Yeah. I mean, that, that that is unusual, and that has to have come from yeah. somewhere, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, like, that, you know, that what happened there, that didn't start there. It would have been... It would have been an accumulation of fears and, and fear of rejections and, and and all this stuff, and then hundred percent. And then you've already got this fear. You've already you're already fe- you're already feeling like a failure. You're already feeling not good enough. You're already feeling like you're not worthy of love. You're already feeling like you're not enough. And then you finally put yourself out there and you get rejected. Absolutely. Bang. Yeah. You go you, straight back into story. You, you go you've straight ex- back into. You've explained yeah. that magnificently. That is, that totally makes sense. Okay. So yeah. so. In a general sense, and that's a great description, a very open and honest description of you. That's wonderful. Um, and, and, and I think a lot of people will relate to that. So what happens next in terms of starting the business and thinking about how to help people? How, how did that, and I know it evolved as a result of what you went through, but how did it actually get from one point to another? Well, it, to be honest, I started being a PT um, about six years ago. So I, I believe that everything's on the way. I don't think anything's in the way. When you look back at things, you go, okay, wow, that makes sense why that happened. So mm. I got into the fitness industry, obviously, because, you know, uh, growing up, I did a bit of boxing and that really helped my anxiety. That really helped me lift my spirits and, and get a bit of confidence. And I was like, wow, that's the secret, right? And mm. I totally think that is still like, that's a big part of it. You have to look after your physical health, okay? Yeah. And I got into being a PT and I loved it. But what I realized is I started realizing that um, people were coming to me with, you know, uh, you know, very good looking girls would come to me and they, st- and they, they would, they would uh, train, they would eat really well, but something still wasn't right on them. They mm. still didn't, they still felt ugly. They still felt stressed out. They still felt all this stuff. I'm like, okay, wow. well, this is not, this is, I, I want I want to help people feel better. So this is not something's going on. And then I started realizing in myself, I still I still got those anxious feelings. Every no, it was a lot better, but they were still there. They, things were still there. Mm. They were simmering mm. under the surface still. Mm. Um, it just, I just had a bit of a better control of it, but I knew there was something missing. Um, and then I started realizing people started coming to me. And they'll they'll pay me to be a PT, but really, I was really good at talking to them. I was yeah. very open with people and very good at talking. You, to them. And I you, think you were they being, started. You were being a mentor. I was being a mentor, and mm. I started realizing that I really love this. I think people need they need a a guide. They need um they need something a little bit more. There's something there's something a bit deeper. Hundred percent. Anyways, mm. I uh I got into a relationship, and it was probably my third relationship in my life. I was about twenty five. Mm. And I was pretty confident going into it. You know, I was at a gym. I had a lot of girls around me. I just got into this relationship. I was single for a while, and, and I'm, I'm getting excited to be in this relationship. And then I got in this relationship, and I realized that all my insecurities come back. All my in- anxiety started to come back. Everything started say. getting triggered. Wow, this yeah. is fascinating. I'm loving it. Yeah, so I thought I was fine because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm living the dream. Of, you know, I'm doing really well. But then I get into this relationship and every, all my triggers from the past, all my things that I thought were gone blew up in my face. And I thought, holy, I said, I thought, wow, I am not, I am not healed. There's something going on. So I thought, what do you do when you do that? I thought, I'll go see a therapist. I, I need help. Like I, there's something mm, going on here. Mm. Um, 
and obviously went to a therapist um and what i found with therapy which is great by the way like i, I do believe therapy oh yeah is, yeah it's great yeah i can re- I, I can re- i can recommend it as well <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely like in that therapists are great support they're great to talk to Mm. great to open up but i found that when i left the therapist's office i started the triggers would come back again i'll go oh god look Mm. the anxiety's still here i'm still getting triggered and and then i'll start sweating and i'll be like i I need to book in another session Mm. and i started really um relying on the, the the therapist to feel good in the moment but i didn't have any tools outside the office i didn't have anything there was, I couldn't see any long-term goals. Mm, so mm. I started looking around for other mentors who are a bit outside the box, who, you know, who know human behavior better than anyone in the world. Cause I wanted to start learning from the best. I didn't want, I really, I really wanted to tackle this. I really wanted to understand psychology. I wanted to understand, um, you know, human behavior and how we work. Mm. So I sought out mentors. Um, as one mentor here in Adelaide, Mojo master. Um, and he, he, he took me under his under his wing and I did all his courses. I, I learned from him and he really started to show me how to shift, you know, the cognitive stuff, the, the beliefs about myself, um, uh, how to change, how to balance out your perceptions, how to do all these cool things I've never heard of in my life and they're pretty unknown. And I started really changing my anxieties. Wow. And then I then I got into a relationship. I was like, wow. And I was I was in that relationship for three and a half years. Um and it was the best relationship I ever had. Um, and yeah, the only reason really we were not together now is because we've grown separate ways, but mm. it wasn't really mm. because of um, Any, and I, anything negative or anything. Yeah, and I yeah. can thank that to the tools that I got. So, so, I, so, so, so j- just just a quickie here. So, w- when you started, when you started seeing the mentor, for example, how yeah. ha- how long after that, Aaron, did you feel as though things were starting to get back on track? It was very, very soon. It was probably like a month mm. after that. Mm. And, and if you don't mind me asking, were you on medication at the time? No, no. no. I've never been on medication. Okay. I, when I was really young, they, uh, the doctor told me I was depressed and, and like kind of advised me to maybe go see um, a psychologist or psychiatrist yeah. Yeah. on something. Mm. Mm. I never liked the idea, and I'm not saying it's not. I, I honestly think medication is great for people who are really, really suffering. Like yeah. it's a great, Absolutely. great solution, definitely yep. short term. Mm. But for some reason, me, I didn't want to do it. I actually, I took. You know, I was smoking weed. I was, I was, you know, doing some drugs, which, and I, that that was my my medication. Which, time. which of course, as you now know, was only making your anxiety worse. Which is making it worse. Hundred yeah. yeah. percent. I mean, it's the same with alcohol. I mean, I, I haven't. When I, I, I mean, I've been. I'm not sure whether you're aware, but I, I went to rehab uh, 13 months ago, and yeah. um, uh, and I haven't had a drink. Uh, I haven't had a joint. I haven't had a line of coke for 13 yeah. months. I mean, yeah. that that the coke, the alcohol. And the dope got me through the three previous years. I say it got yeah. me through. It didn't. Yeah. It completely stuffed me up. But yeah, but, yeah. but, but, but yeah. when you're in it, you feel as though it's getting you through. But anyway, keep going. I'm interested. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a short term. It's a totally. short term solution. Totally. Yeah. 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 yeah totally. Um, but yeah, and then um, so I started realizing that this stuff needs to get out there. If if this can. If I can get this out there to people, like I suffered most of my life with debilitating anxiety, and then um, I found these tools. I found this mentor who, uh, you know, was thinking outside the box and and knows human behaviour inside and out. I thought I'm going to study as much as I can and learn everything I can every single day about this, so I can help others. Not, you know, for selfish reasons too, so I can help myself of and then help others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then yeah, and then uh, just started taking on clients about two and a half years ago, just as just because I loved it. I had the I had a gym at the same time, mm. um, and then that just started growing. Uh, I started doing one on ones with people and started getting really good results with uh, their mental health. Um, and yeah, probably about two months ago, I I sold the gym and went full time into this because. Um, I just can't think of anything else I'd want to do than help people with their mental health and just continue to work on mine. It's just That's a I wonderful just, thing. I just don't know what else yeah. I would love to do. It's that, just I've, I've found my thing. Well, and you also made a really good point there, and, uh, you know, part of the reason that I went very public with my mental health and addiction issues was, um, and not all of my friends thought it was a good idea, and to, yeah. and, and, and I guess to a, to a small degree... Uh, you know, uh, not that I particularly am looking for full-time work now. I'm still working on building my media training business up. But there would still be people who, now that they know my background, would think, uh, 
no, I probably won't risk it with Mark. You know, I mean, they wouldn't say that publicly. And, I, and look, I, I completely yeah. understand that. But yeah. but but one of the things that and I'm not doing much of it now because obviously of COVID, but if I do a, a, a talk about mental health and, and part of that talk is about where I was and, you know, what I did about it and where I, where I am now and where I want to be, um, I walk away from that feeling really empowered. So I get, I get, I get the issue of um, it being selfish. It's really good for you too, but, uh, you know, yep. more so with you, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's a wonderful path to take because... Um, mate, you're, nev- you're never, ever, ever going to be short of customers. You're never going to be, uh, s- sadly, sadly. Yeah, 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 it's uh, yeah. true. It's so, true. And, and, and the more people you can help, and, and you make a really good point too about the mentoring. I mean, sometimes when, when I do my media training, for example, um, uh, you know, I, 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 I you know, I, you know, let, let, let's say you want to do some media training with me. So what I do is I turn up wherever it is, wherever your business is or at home or whatever, set up a camera, uh, and I teach you how to um, handle a media interview, whether it be TV, radio, print, online, whatever it might be. So, you know, I, yep. I talk to you a little bit about deportment, where to stand, um, how to look. Uh, you know, pref- before we get on camera, we, we talk about the topic we're going to talk about. Uh, we'd prepare. Uh, I'd get you to, you know, start thinking about the message, you, all of that sort of stuff. So yep. so in a general sense, that's, that, that, that's what I do. But I yep. find, I find, and probably not as much as you, but I find there's a certain percentage of my clients who in the end will say something like, I just saw myself on camera. I'm really not happy with that. And in the yep. end, you become, you almost become a, a psychologist to them because, you know, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to say, well, you know, you, you know, you're pretty ugly. There's nothing much you can do about it. What I say is yep. I, I say, you know what? Everyone looks different. Don't worry about it. Think more clearly about what you're going to say. Um, uh, you know, you are what you are. Be proud of it. So in the end, you know, I, I end up, as I say, not to your degree, but yeah. in the end, yeah. you know, I, I, I'm helping them with, with I'm helping, him, helping them in their heads. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, yeah. And, and, and so many people want that. So as part of your business, what percentage of it? Well, I guess now that you've gone into it full time, it's sort of a hundred percent. But when you were doing the the the, the, um, the PT and the gym work and stuff like that, in the early days, what, when I say what percentage, just approximately, how many people were coming there who who were coming there to get fit physically? But in the end, you might have a chat to them about how they feel. Well, I'd say. I, I literally had a few of my clients saying that I was a therapist as a joke, but like it was kind of serious. So yeah, yeah, wow. I would say I'd say probably eighty percent were coming to me. Um, Seventy to eighty percent would be coming to me to to feel better, wow. to, to wow. talk to me, to you know. Obviously, we'd train and all that, but in between sets or in between boxing rounds, we'd have a chat. Isn't that as interesting? Well, what's going on? You know, it was more of that, and I think that's why I probably grew a, a fair following uh, with PT and and, um, mm. and members and mm. stuff. Mm. It's because I wasn't just, you know, I, I actually opened my gym as not just a gym; it was a mindset gym. Yeah, it was that's gym wonderful. It's a great idea. Yeah. Great idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's needed, and I guarantee in five, ten years they're going to be everywhere. Gyms will have, uh, you know, um, psychologists. They'll have mental health uh, coaches there. Absolutely. It'll, it'll be at one point, cognitive therapy and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah. so if if and again, paint a picture. So. You, you, are you saying that you do one on one? But I mean, if a business or a company came to you and said we'd like you to, talk, you do you do groups as well? Is that how it works? It, well, so what I do is I find that the people I work with need to want to do it. Otherwise, um, they'll shut off, and it's mm. kind of like you mm. know. So I work with people. What I, I ask everyone, I ask everyone, are you ready and committed? to start healing are you ready and committed because if not because some people and it's not a bad thing if you're not it's just some people aren't actually ready yet no I don't understand yeah they're not ready to face their ego they're not ready to face those fears and that's cool it makes sense so um, I do work with groups I do I do one on ones I do I pretty much do anything if anyone's committed. Mm. And I'm like, I'm, I'm cool if they're committed to, to healing. I'm, mm. I'm all in. And, and, um, and, and, and again, paint a picture. So let, let's say, for example, I, you know, I, I wanted to do some work with you. Is it, is, it, is it one session? Is it any number of sessions? Is it a course? How, how does it work? Yeah, so, so my main thing, which is it's starting to really grow now, is my program. I've got a 
online program called Mastering Your Emotions and Life. And so what you do is you, it's it's a um, drip fed con- drip fed content. So yep. every month you get a new topic, and that every month everything's designed to start to lower that anxiety, to start being more grounded, to start loving yourself more, Got it. to start being more connected. So every month is new topics. So number one. You know, we do um, uh, we balance out emotions in in, in month one. Uh, month two, we start healing your inner child. Month three, we go into all your fears and start to knock each one of them out. Um, and we st- every month is a new month to just keep getting deeper and deeper That's until wonderful. the point where you've got all these tools. Where the thing is, these tools that I teach, I teach people to to be able to do this whenever they need. Yes. So, yeah. you know, I, I want people to be self-healers. Like, mm. like mm. I know when I get triggered of something, you know, I, of course I'm human, we're all human. We're never going to get to a point where we never get triggered ever again or we never get uh, a little bit anxious, or a little bit sad or depressed. Like mm. that, And mm. that's life. Mm. But the question is how quick can you go from anxious to feeling grounded and safe again? Yes. How quick can you go from depressed to feeling to feeling okay again, mm, you know, mm, without without um, bypassing it through food, drugs, alcohol, all that. How, that's the question, and that's what I like to teach people: is how can they, how quick can they go from from uh, the painful experience that they're going through to being okay with it and being okay. And, and so that's online. So so, and I'll, we'll we'll get some details on that in a second. That's online, but I take it you also do. I mean, obviously through COVID, it's been a bit difficult, but I take it you yeah. also do face to face. Yeah, I do face to face. A lot of my clients are like one on ones. They're throughout Australia, so I do Zoom calls and stuff. Which yeah, is it's yeah. the same stuff. Yeah, um, it's all yeah. So one on ones and and the program. That's what I do. That's so. wonderful. That's wonderful. So, so Aaron, how, how how do you feel about what you're doing? I mean, when when you put your head on the pillow at night and and you know you, you know you've 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 done a couple of courses and I'm not talking about how do you feel financially about it I'm talking about yeah. h- how do you feel inside about it about me helping people yeah or? yeah yeah about that yeah. I, it so for me that it makes me so like the other day I had a lady she's 61 and she messaged me I think she's in Queensland hmm. she's 61 years old she has she had debilitating um, anxiety uh, like health anxiety where she freaks out about getting sick and all that. Yeah. And she had, she's been doing therapies and she's done everything, medications, everything. She, you name it, she's done it for 30 years. And she come across my program and she thought, well, I'm, I'm willing to try anything. Like nothing's worked. Mm. And, uh, that was five weeks ago. And she messaged me last week and said, Aaron, she, oh, it's on my Facebook page. Anyone can go, um, see what she said to me. But, um, she messaged me with this long thing saying, Aaron, uh, I just want to thank you so much. Like, this is the first time in uh, pretty much my whole, my whole life, but especially the last 30 years, where I sat on my front bench, at my, my front porch, and I actually sat there without any anxiety, and I seen a bird for the first time. Wow. She said, she said I seen trees blowing in the wind. I seen, mm. the, I seen the, the, the sunshine coming through the, the trees. She mm. goes, I've never been able to do this because I've been so anxious and I've been so in my head and I've been so wow. unsafe. I've never, I, have, I literally haven't seen a bird for 30 years. She was. She's never noticed them. She said, I just want to thank you, um, you know, for, for giving me these tools. I, I can't believe it. And, you know, and the thing what happens is when people start to learn this when they're a little bit older, especially they think, why didn't anyone tell me this 30 years ago? And that's mm. what that's what happens a lot. But back to your question, that hearing stuff like that makes everything worth it because a lot of people don't believe what I do. Some people, you know, like anything you do, there's going to be haters and, and, and lovers. Of course, you know? of course. But it makes, it makes it all worth it when you see that and that makes me sleep so well, it's not funny. Wow, that, that's sensational. That is sensational. Yeah. And you're right, you know, when you get wonderful testimonials like that that are just out of the blue, you're not even asking for them, and they come out of the blue. I mean, obviously, from a credibility point of view, they're wonderful, but, yeah, from a personal satisfaction point of view, I, you know, I, I, I think that's, that's, that's just a wonderful thing. That, that is a wonderful yeah. thing. So, Aaron, h- how do people get in contact with you or, uh, you know, what's, what's the deal there? The best thing, I'm pretty active on my Facebook. I've got heaps of Facebook. I do a Facebook Live every single day about this kind of stuff. So if you just look up Aaron Cartwright, yep. Mindset Educator. Okay. Um, and from there, you, you'll see the link to 
to my programs and all that kind of stuff. Oh, it's wonderful. a bit of a long one, so yeah, I'll, I'll probably send it through and we can we can put it up or whatever. It's a bit long to, to say, but that's okay. Um, no, that's fine. Yeah. So Aaron, so Aaron Cartwright, I, I didn't have any trouble finding you on Facebook, Aaron Cartwright, and I didn't realize. You, so you do a Facebook live every day. Pretty much every day. I'm doing lives every day and people really love I'm getting messages every day saying, wow, thank you very much.